Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Oh my god, I just got back from the pool. And I like looked in the mirror and I was like, I got some sun today at the pool. <laughs> this has just been the most absolutely perfect weekend. <laughs> just let me tell you, I just had such a great weekend. So I want to fill you guys in on uh, last night and today. It's just been such a, it's just been such a great weekend. So, so nice. Um, let's do a little time and temperature check real quick. It's currently 5.51 p.m. I literally just got back from the pool uh, like five minutes ago and I went upstairs and checked on Alex and he's asleep. Boo Radley's asleep and um, I changed out, changed out of my swimsuit and put on these uh, camouflage sweat shorts and, and now I'm like all cozy and things like that. So anyway, okay, the temperature is, let's see, and I wasn't even planning on going to the pool today and I had such a great day at the pool. The temperature is currently 93 and sunny still. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The, the temperature of the water was perfect. Um, so yeah. So today we got up and um, I have coffee from brunch. The flavor is Frangelica. It's not my favorite flavor. It's okay. But I was really craving a Diet Dr. Pepper. I actually haven't had one in a couple days. So I was like, last night at dinner I had a couple Diet, Dr. Diet Pepsis. But I haven't had Diet Dr. Pepper in a while. So... I thought I would have a ah, sound. So today, um, we got up and went to brunch at Cafe Patashu. And um, Alex did not get the soup today. He had coffee and then just a regular Patashu blend. And then he got the Cuban and he ate half of it and he took it home. And I have been, like, for the last 24 hours, craving a sandwich. Like, just, like, a really good sandwich. So they have this sandwich. I think I read it to you guys. Um, I don't know why the, the lighting is so weird. Now it seems really dark. It doesn't seem, like, bright. It seems really dark. But anyway, always something with the lighting over here. Um, I'm hoping this isn't what happened the other day when, like, the screen went black. You guys are probably watching this and being like, Peter, there's nothing wrong with the lighting. So anyway. Um, but I had this sandwich a while ago. Our friend that works there, she was like, you should try, I asked her, I was like, what do you think of this sandwich called the Fat Rabbit? It's like a vegan sandwich they have there. And she was like, cause I texted her last night, cause I knew she wasn't working today. So I was like, what is it you do um, on the sandwich? And so she just laughed at me, she was like, LOL. It was her birthday yesterday, and so I was texting her about that. But then I said, um, I hate to ask you, but what do you replace on the Fat Rabbit? And she said, ha ha ha, the cashew ricotta with the herbed cream cheese. And so, and then she said, don't get it toasted, just get it on regular bread. So I got the Fat Rabbit. The Fat Rabbit has like cucumber, sprouts, the herb cream cheese, and then I got it on um, whole grain bread. Their whole grain bread there is so good, but not toasted. And I got a side of chips, and then I also got a side of fruit to bring home, because for some reason, I don't know why, it was a discussion about fruit with salt, and fruit with, and somebody commented on my video, and they said, I love fruit with tahini too, and then I was like craving fruit with tahini, um, but I didn't really want to stop at the grocery store and buy a bunch of fruit today, so I just like got, they like put together a fruit cup for me, and like, so I took that home, so it's got like pineapple and stuff on it, I'm real excited, that's gonna be my treat tonight. Mm. I get done watching this if Alex is up. We're going to watch Dubai and RuPaul's Drag Race. So, yeah. So, it's been, like, such a wonderful day. And then Alex took me to some errands that I ran um, or that I needed to run after we ate brunch and we got home. We actually went to brunch a little bit earlier today. So, I didn't get home too late. I got home about 3.15 or something like that. And Alex had kept on saying through brunch, she was like, it's such a nice day. Like, do you want to go to the pool? And I was like, yeah, I think, like, I had planned on making like four or five videos today, but I was like, if, if the weather's really nice, maybe I'll just go to the pool. I'm actually thinking about like, for the rest of this month, for the next, you know, maybe part of July as well, just kind of like doing light filming, obviously my vlog every single day and probably like a drama video every day. I'm not filming, I'm, this is the only video I'm filming today, but like, if it's nice, I'm going to go to the pool and I'm not going to focus. I'm going to spend my time outside while I can. Because in fall and winter, I can film six videos, seven videos a day and be stuck inside. But during the summer, when I can go outside and I can go to the pool, like, I'm going to go outside and go to the pool. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, like, 
if I get up real early on a day to film a bunch of videos, I'm gonna do it, but I'm not gonna like, you know, press myself to do that and stuff like that, because I think it's really healthy for me to be outside and, and you know, interact with people at the pool and be at the pool and stuff like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I kind of made that decision today when I was at the pool, because I was like, oh, I should be, I should be back there, I should be filming this, I should be filming that. I thought, you know what, like this is healthy for you. Like you love to film videos, yes. Um, you live a blessed life that people are willing to watch your videos, but you need to, and you need to like, you know, be outside and this is the time that you can do it. You know, when it's snowing outside, you can be inside filming as many videos as you want. So for the next month or two, August, it'll probably be so hot because it's like July and August in Indiana is going to be really, really hot. But, um, but I've also learned my neighbor across the streets, they're cooking, they're cooking at it. It smells so good. Um, when I was going up to the pool, he was just like lighting it. He said, I can get up early. Like on a weekend, it's a little bit different because you know we do stuff. But I can get up early and film videos before I go to the pool, then enjoy like three or four hours of the pool, and then come back and film like a drama video and a vlog. And then I still get up four or five videos that day. Like that makes me happy, you know, because I still get to do the videos, which I love. And then um, I still get to go to the pool and things like that and listen to audiobooks and read and watch TV shows. I actually feel like my days are really, really full now, and it makes me really happy. So. So I went up to the pool. Oh, so Alex at brunch was like, do you want to go up to the pool? So we got back and he goes, I know I should probably go up to the pool because he wanted to get some, you know, sun. But he was like, but I'm really just, I want to lay down and take a nap. He got home rather late last night. So, but I'll talk about that in just a second. He had a really great time last night, but he got home late. So he's super, super tired and he couldn't fall asleep right away either. So he's super tired right now. And so he was like, I know I should go to the pool. He's like, but he goes, are you going to go to the pool? I said, I think I'm going to go to the pool. I said, it's beautiful today. I mean, it's like so pretty outside. And I said, I think I'm going to go to the pool. When we were driving back, I said, slow down. I wanted to look at the pool. There was like three people up there. And so it was like, yeah, there's not a lot of people at the pool. I'm going to go. If it was packed, I probably wouldn't have gone. There was like, cause I thought, you know, it was going to be absolutely packed today. So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that and all kind of stuff. So anyway, um, so he's like, well, I'm going to take a little bit of a nap. I said, well, I probably won't be at the pool that long. So I got changed real quick and I went up to the pool and I got up there like 3.30 and my neighbor next door was there. And then her friend whose parent, it's her dad and stepmom, moved in here and they moved in over there and I had never met them before. And so when I went up there, she had just left and was coming back. She had to go home to like feed her dog. And so she was coming back and, um, her friend and her friend's son, who's like, I don't know, like six or seven or something like that. Um, the three of them go to the pool a lot. And so her friend was sitting on the steps with this woman that I didn't know. And so I started, she was like, Hey, it's so good to see you. And she's like, let me introduce you to my stepmom." So she introduced me to my step, her stepmom. Her stepmom is a year younger than me. The age difference between her and her husband is 12 years, just like Alex and I. So we were talking about that. Anyway, we like hit it off right away. She's like, I'm so glad I met somebody my age in this neighborhood. And it was so funny because when we were talking, I was like, so she's, she's lived here for two, almost she'll be three years in February. And I said, what do you think about it? She's like, I love it in here. Like they used to live like out where my aunt and uncle used to live. And she's like, I love it in here. She's like, our neighbors are really, really nice. She's like, it's very quiet. She's like, you know, but she's like, it is an older neighborhood. She's like, but that's part of what I love about it. And she's like, you know, I would say 80% of the neighbors are super, super friendly. She was like, and then there's a few that can be kind of rude. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of been my experience too. And so she's like, I'm so glad that I met somebody like closer to my age and stuff like that. And I was like, well, she was telling me where she lived. And I was like, I walk by your house because I, you know, walk at night. I've started doing that again. And so anyway, I ended up staying up there till what was it? Five, like 535, 540 or something like that. I ended up staying up there. It was so nice. We talked the whole time, all of us. It was so fun. And it was literally just them. So it was uh, my neighbor and then her friend and her friend's son, her stepmom her uh, half sister and then her half sister's boyfriend. It was so nice. There was like another family when we got up there was like three people. It was like a dad, a mom and their daughter, but they left like right when I got up there. Um, but yeah, it was so fun. It was so nice. And the, the water was, the temperature was perfection. The sun was on the pool the whole time. It was so nice. I feel like I got a little bit of sun today. I just looked in the mirror upstairs and I was like, yeah, you got a little bit of sun. So that was, pr I mean, I was in the pool and I like looked at the clock and I was like, I still want to vlog before it gets too late. I don't want to be like super tired. And, um, so I looked at the clock and I was like, yeah, I think it's, I'm going to go. It's like five, you know, five thirty already. But anyway, I was like, this has been like the most perfect weekend. 
It's just been such a perfect weekend, such an enjoyable weekend. If I could like dream of what a summer weekend look, would look like, this would be, for me, what a perfect summer weekend would look like. Um, so yeah. So I have half my sandwich. Oh, I didn't finish all my sandwich, the fat rabbit. So I have half my sandwich that I'm gonna eat while we're watching um, RuPaul's Drag Race, and then I have the fruit cup that I'm gonna put uh, tahini on. And, uh, yeah, so let me tell you about last night. So, I got done vlogging. Remember I wanted to walk last night before we went to dinner? I honestly didn't think that I would. I thought I would just, like, skip last night. Something is leaking over here. What is it? Is it the hose or something? Something's ticking. So, previous to me vlogging yesterday, I didn't really think that I would walk yesterday. I was like, no, but I was like, okay, you're going to go out to eat. You're going to, like, you know, I'm trying to, like, think ahead. <sighs> you guys, I did all this stuff yesterday. And I literally lost, like, two points of a pound. So, I, last night, after I got done vlogging, I went and I walked. And I walked for 40 minutes. And then I came back and took a shower real quick and got changed. I just wore, like, a, uh, I was going to actually wear this white, like, t-shirt with just a pair of jeans. Everybody was real casual. We went to Livery downtown off of college. It's, like, one of my favorite places to go. I love it. There's now one on the north side, too, in, um that mall called Hamilton Town Square. There's like one up there too, but I love it. It's like empanadas and guacamole and things like that. It's really, really good. Everybody got skirt steak last night. So I was like, at the last minute, I didn't really know what to wear. And so I just had like my holy jeans on and I wore these, like the, these sandals I bought like two years ago. I love them. They're big buckle Birkenstocks and they have like the gold button uh, buckles on them. And then they're like this really beautiful, like teak colored leather. They're not super comfortable. They, they're like, the only pair of Birkenstocks that I have, that they, they kind of cut into my feet a little bit. And so I'm like, I have to kind of really wear them out a little bit. So I wore those last night. And I just kind of threw it on at the last minute. What is over there ticking? I feel like it's... I don't know what it is. I just watered the plants last night. But I don't see anything leaking. It sounds like a leak. Um... So anyway, yeah, and so then we took an Uber down there because Alex knew that he was going to take an Uber home because they were going to probably go out, and I hadn't made up my mind yet whether or not I was going to go out or not. I kind of knew I wasn't going to go out, but whatever. So we went down there to dinner, and it was Alex and I, and then, like, one of his really good friends and her boyfriend, and then another one of his good friends and her boyfriend, and then um, this girl that he's good friends with, and then this these two girls he's really good friends with. The one girl, her boyfriend was supposed to come. He couldn't come because he had to work. <clears throat> and so it was her and this other girl. And then the guy's best friend that came that Alex kind of knows or whatever because they were all going out together afterwards. So anyway, we went to livery last night. We were there from like our, res our reservations were at 7.30 and we were there till like, I think we were there till like almost 10. It was fun, but I was so hungry. Oh, so I walked. Did I say that already? I walked for 40 minutes last night. And um, I had, when I got back, I kept on, while I was like putting stuff together to get ready, I kept on listening to my audiobook, which was the May book for Peter's Book Club, which was called How, somebody asked me this yesterday, I think in the comments, I was like skimming through the comments last night, what the May book was. You can always find out what the books are on Peter's Book Club. I always like, the month before I've always announced, it'll say like big book club announcement or something, and that was where I announced the books. Mel and I confirmed the book for July, and I am between two books for Peter's Book Club for July. So I'm going to make that announcement sometime this week. Um, so anyway, so I had like 43 minutes of it, and I was like, I want to finish that when I come home. So I was just going to sit on the front porch. So we went to livery last night. Okay, so Alex and I got to split. We had, um, what's it called? Like cauliflower, it was like some cauliflower kind of thing. It was either between that or between sweet plantains for like an appetizer, and Alex wasn't like really feeling the sweet plantains, so I was like, just do the cauliflower. So we got the cauliflower. And then he got the skirt steak that comes on like these potato things. Like everybody got the skirt, skirt steak except for me. I got uh, a, the street corn off the cob, which was delicious, and then three empanadas. They're like small, they're like that big. And I got the corn um, and queso empanadas. They were delicious. So when we were when we were done, I like got an Uber from the restaurant, said goodbye to everybody, and they walked over. 
they had a drink at some bar that's like right behind us and then they ended up going to this nightclub downtown called Envy. I um, got the Uber home and when I got home I was like, I felt really full and I wanted to finish that audiobook. So I was like, I'm gonna put my shoes on, I'm gonna go walk. So I went and walked last night when I got home again, you guys, for an hour and 15 minutes, okay? Walked for an hour and 15 minutes, came home. It was so humid last night, I was so sweaty when I got back. I had already taken a shower before we went to dinner. I took another shower when I got home last night from my walk. Oh, I finished, uh, and then I like put on my pajamas. And so then I finished, while I was walking, I finished How to Solve Your Own Murder which was in the May book for Peter's Book Club. I loved it. I thought it was really great. I gave it four out of five stars. I would have given it five stars because it was a good mystery. It's very much like an Agatha Christie mystery. I think it's going to be a series. I think this is because she decides, well, this isn't going to ruin anything for anybody, but like this town that she's in is like where she's going to live. So it's like their first book in the series or whatever. Um, and so, but she announces that I think pretty early on. The detective asks her something like, are you gonna stay here? And she says, yeah, something like that. So like that's at the beginning of the book. He says something like that to her and she decides she's gonna stay there. So I think it's gonna be the first book in a series. I like it, it was really good. I, the, for me, from a four to a five, it has to be like extremely memorable or really profound or really impactful in some way. It was a great mystery, it was a great read. I don't think it was as smart or clever as like First Lie Wins or one of those books, um, like on the Reese with her, the Reese's Book Club. Like First Lie Wins was fantastic. I mean, I've listened to some like and read some thrillers that are just like so genius. It's like, how did you ever think of that? Uh, the Denise Mina ones, I love those. So yeah, it was good, but I gave it four stars instead of five. It was like really the characters I got real into. So then the June book for Peter's Book Club is the Thursday uh, Murder Club. And by Richard Osman, and I started it last night. I'm like an hour into it already, maybe further than that. And it's about, I didn't realize that it was like an English, like it took place in England. Um, so it's about these four older people. They're like in their 70s and 80s, and they have this murder, they're all interested in like true crime cases and trying to solve them. So they have this Thursday murder club. Um, but the beginning part of it is all about the setup that they're in this like retirement home and um they have like their own apartments in there and the guy that's like in charge of it that owns it he's kind of like a con artist a little bit and he's just really out for money he doesn't really care about these people and then there's like this detective and she gets involved with this thursday murder club by coming and giving a speech there about like safety and security issues it is so well done you guys like i don't know what i expected um, when I started it, it starts off with like diary entries from this woman named Joyce that's part of the, the Thursday Murder Club. I don't know what I expected, but it's totally different when I expected. And literally I'm walking and I'm like laughing as I'm walking. It's so funny. I mean, it's so funny. It's like these four older people and they're like like drinking like two bottles of wine at lunch at 12.50 in the afternoon. And, um... This one guy's like, yeah, I do yoga, and, and but not Pilates, because then I go swimming after that in the pool. They have a really nice pool here and stuff like that. And he's, like, talking about his, like, wraparound patio. And the detective, she's like, I think I could live here and have a couple glasses of wine at 12.15 and go for a swim in the afternoon. She's like, it's so funny. Like, it's really a funny book, but it's great cozy mystery, too. I don't, even, I don't know that I would necessarily call it a cozy mystery, but I don't know that I necessarily wouldn't call it a cozy mystery, but it's a mystery. But the characters are so funny and they're so endearing. It really kind of reminds me of like my neighbor, some of my neighbors in this neighborhood, you know? So anyway, I started that last night. Yeah. And I, so I listened to that and I walked for an hour and 15 minutes. It was late at night, you guys, when I was, uh, when I was listening to that. I mean, it was like really late. And then I, when I was walking, there were, like, people, like, sitting outside on their porches and stuff last night. Like, I mean, this was at, like, 11.30, midnight, something like that, I think, is when I started walking. I can't remember when I started walking. I think it was, like, 11.20 when I started walking. Because I usually won't walk, walk that late at night because I'm, like, if people just see me, they'll think it's weird, even though my shoes are, like, glow-in-the-dark shoes. But I was, like, people think it's weird that somebody's walking this late at night, but nobody did. I, like, walked by these one people's house. They're, like, hey, it's a nice evening for a walk, isn't it? I was, like, yeah. Because, like, I see people all, like, stop, you know, my book. I did pass, like... Eight teenagers. It was like four guys and four girls. They were all like on their phones and they were talking and stuff. And they all just like waved to me when I walked. They were on the other side of the street. They were real friendly. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of people out late last night when I was walking. So I walked until about 
I walked until about 12, like 12.20, 12.30 or something like that. I don't know what time I started. But anyway, I came back, hung out with Boo for a little bit, then I took a shower. And then I wasn't really sure what I wanted to start. So I was like, you know what, it is such a beautiful summer evening. I'm gonna watch To Kill a Mockingbird. So I sat out here last night. Alex was texting me 9 million pictures of he and his friends. And um, so he, um, he ended up, like, they ended up leaving at like, he like, they went over to one of his friends lives downtown and they ended up going over there. And so he ended up leaving, I think it was like 1.30, 1.45 or something like that. And then they went over to her house and they took an Uber back from there. So I sat out here and watched Kill Mockingbird. He came home when I was like, I guess it wasn't too late last night because I was like halfway through To Kill Mockingbird. It was so funny because like he knows some of the things from the, the from the movie. And as he was like walking up from the Uber, uh, it was like one of the lines he knows, and so he said it when I was like, when he was walking, it was something Atticus says when he was walking up here, he said it, it was cute. So anyway, I like stopped it and talked to him for a little bit, and he was telling me about the night and everything like that, and I was like, did you have a good time? He's like, yeah, I had a really good time. He's like, thank you so much for going to dinner. I was like, yeah, it was a blast. I had a good time at dinner last night. It was fun. Um, so I watched Kill Mockingbird last night, and then on Tubi is also a documentary called Hey Boo, and I had watched it years ago, um... But I didn't really remember it very well. And I wouldn't say it's the world's best documentary, but it's interesting because it talks about a lot about um, Harper Lee, Nell Harper Lee, who wrote To Kill Mockingbird. And kind of like her struggles with putting the book together and how the book came to be. And that, and I was just talking about this the other day, I think maybe in my, my when I announced the movie for this week, for Peter's Movie Club. And, um how the book takes place in the 30s. I thought it was the 40s, but it takes place in the 30s. Um, but the movie, uh, or the book comes out, I think it was in 61 or 62. And then um, the movie was made in like 63 or 64. They talk a lot about it. They have like, they interview a lot of authors in it. And, um, Oh, she's the neighbor that I can't hear very well, but she's, like, having a full-on conversation with him. She's so sweet. Um, I wonder what he's out there cooking. He usually pushes... It's weird, because he has it that way. It must be the way the, bl the wind is blowing today. Because he has it facing that way. He usually has it facing this way. Um, but they have, like, a lot of authors that they, like, well-renowned renowned authors that, like, interviewed and stuff like that. And they were asking a lot of people, like, what they thought about the book and when they first read it and how it impacted them and stuff like that. And it was interesting, because they talked a lot about the civil rights movement and like things that happened after To Kill a Mockingbird and things that had happened before. Talked about like Emmett Till and things like that and like the the buses and all of that. And it was so interesting to hear about like how To Kill a Mockingbird like fit into all of that. And um, it's an interesting documentary. I wouldn't say it's the greatest documentary in the world. I've seen other documentaries that are better. It was interesting because after I finished that, it was do this documentary was recommended to me called Salinger about J.D. Salinger, who's also one of my favorite authors. And um, I was like, I remember watching that one too because he was like a recluse. They kept on saying, well, what was so weird about it was that as I was watching it, like, something occurred to me last night when I was watching it. I don't remember the last time that I watched To Kill a Mockingbird, honestly. Maybe it's been a couple years. Last year, a couple years. I don't remember. But one of the things that was interesting to me is that I have always loved Scout and identified with Scout, right? This time it was so weird because when I was watching it, I was like, the part at the very end when they're asking Scout about who hurt Jim <clears throat> and who carried him home, they say, um, Atticus and Mr. Tate, the police officer, the sheriff, says, well, who brought him home? And she says, there he is. You can ask him yourself. Then they open the door and it's Boo Radley. And she goes, hey, Boo. I love that scene. I put it up on my Instagram. It was like one of the greatest scenes ever filmed in movies. Because it is. And it's interesting because my per it's weird how your perspective changes after you watch movies, like, throughout your life. Because I watched it last night, and I was like, I think Boo represents those parts of ourselves that we don't see for a long time that scare us. And then one day, they no longer scare us, you know? And we're no longer afraid of them. It's like we truly are looking into ourselves. I feel like that that's kind of like, to some degree, what that moment represents. 
And I was like, you know, I was thinking about it, and I was like, I'm really, to be honest with you, a little bit more Boo Radley-ish than I am Scout-ish. And I just don't know that I've ever realized that, that I am so much more, I identify so much more with the character of Boo Radley. What's interesting about it was when I watched a documentary, towards the end, there's a scene when they people start saying that people always thought that she was a grown-up scout and that Harper Lee wasn't really a recluse. Like, she interacted with a lot of people, right? In her older age, she just stopped doing interviews, she stopped writing, all that kind of stuff, right? And that um, she was really Boo Radley. Oprah Winfrey meets with her, she shares a story in there that she goes and has lunch with her at the Four Seasons or whatever, and she's like, 20 minutes in, I knew she was never gonna do like an interview with me, like a recorded interview, she doesn't say it, but like a recorded interview on the show, right? And she looks, Harper Lee looks at Oprah and says, don't you know, like, I'm Boo Radley, right? Like, I don't want the limelight and all that kind of stuff. Like, that's too much for me. I can't handle it. And I think it's interesting. It's all she, like, really wanted at the at first, but then, like, it came with this price and she didn't know what to do with it, right? And then everybody was expecting this big second book of hers, right? Her sister says in there, I think her name was Alice, that, um... And this, this documentary was filmed before Ghost Set of Watchmen was released. Mary Badham, the actress that plays Scout, she's in the whole thing. I love her so much. Um, somebody said in the comment section that they went and saw her. If anybody ever sees that she's speaking anywhere in Indianapolis, please let me know, because I won't see that probably, but I love her so much. I would like, it would, I would love to see her speak in, about To Kill Mockingbird or Gregory Peck or the movie or anything. I just love her. So anyway, um, but she's in it. I don't know, it's just interesting to me when you look at... Watching the movie last night was different to me. I could still watch it a thousand more times. The music alone, you know, and just the, the summer scenes and all of this stuff. Just, it was different to me though last night. I got very teary-eyed at different points and uh, the part in the courtroom. Um, when Atticus Finch packs up his stuff and he, he leaves. And the Reverend says to Scout, Miss Jean Louise, stand up. Your your father's passing. Like. Yeah. Such a great such a great book and movie. It was interesting watching the documentary of how many people it like it impacted their lives. So after I got done with that, I um, yeah, after I got done with that, I like put all my stuff away and then I went upstairs and I went to bed. I had a hard time falling asleep last night. I don't know if it was those. Sometimes like. I had a cup of coffee when I came home, but I was real, I was like yawning. I was real sleepy when I drank a cup of coffee. Sometimes caffeine from soda keeps me up more than like caffeine from coffee and stuff does, you know? I think I had like two and a half Diet Pepsis when I was at the restaurant last night. They were big pep Diet Pepsis, so maybe it was that. I don't know. I didn't feel like awake until like I went to bed and then I just couldn't fall asleep. I was just laying there petting Mr. Boo Radley and... All that kind of stuff. So yeah. Talk to my dad a little bit for Father's Day today. Ask him if he wanted to go do something. He doesn't really ever like to leave. Like they like to stay at home and not go anywhere and stuff like that. And so he didn't really want to do anything today. He was just like, What did I tell what did he tell me? He texted me later and what did he say? He was watching. Hold on a second. He was watching some sports thing. He was watching the Fever game. <laughs> he texted me that later. So anyway. He was like, well, maybe in July we'll like, you know, do you like a cookout or do something? And then, like, they just don't, like, they don't, they're not, like, social public people at all. They, like, hardly ever go out at all. And um, my dad just loves sitting on the back patio, looking at the lake and stuff like that. So... It's funny, I can remember back in the day, like years, and I'd always ask my dad, like, what do you want to do for Father's Day and stuff like that? And he would say, um, he was like, oh, 
Father's Day is just, uh, it's just a Hallmark holiday. It doesn't mean anything. You know, you don't have to buy me a card or whatever. I'd be like, my mom would always be like, did you do something for your dad, my stepmom? You know, I'd be like, yeah, like I got a card. I did this and whatever, you know. I was kind of surprised. It was funny when we went to brunch today. I looked at Alex and I said, this place is packed on Mother's Day, but on Father's Day, there's nobody here because it was, Pat, she was empty today. And then at the pool, I thought there were like, you know, be a lot of people up there for Father's Day and there was really nobody up there today for Father's Day, which was kind of interesting to me. So, the camera stopped. But anyway, my dad was like, yeah, in July, let's get together and we can do like your birthday, Alex's birthday, we can do Father's Day and stuff like that. And then my dad's birthday is in August. And he's like, we can just do everything together and do like a barbecue and all that kind of stuff. I was like, okay, sounds good. My cousin, Caroline, it's her wedding anniversary. Tomorrow is her wedding anniversary. And... Father's Day is today, and she said to me this week, she said, because, you know, she's on this girl's trip in Michigan. She said, do you, do you think it's bad that I'm going out of town, like, on my wedding anniversary and on Father's Day? And what's so funny is, like, for Mother's Day, they all went to a basketball game, and Caroline was like, nobody's doing anything for me on Mother's Day. And I was like, do you care? She's like, no, I could care less. She's like, I, to be honest with you, I'm glad that I just get the house to myself and I can watch a show, you know, and have a glass of wine or whatever on Mother's Day. She's like, I'm glad they're gone. And so, anyway, but they, like, came home. Like, her son, like, gave her stuff when he came home from the basketball game that night and stuff like that. But I was like, well, what does Mike want to do? Why do why do most dads never want to do anything for Father's Day? They just want a day to enjoy themselves. You know what I mean? Like, like my mother... If I did not do something special for her for Mother's Day, she would have been so been out of shape. She would have been like, oh my God, you didn't remember Mother's Day or whatever. My dad could give a shit. My dad, like, since I was four, could give a shit, you know? It seems like every dad that I know is, like, so similar to that, you know? <laughs> like, I was texting, you know, other people today wish them Happy Father's Day. They're just like, thanks. I mean, like, does anybody care? You know? It's so funny to me. But, did you guys see this thing that was going around? I feel like I seen it posted on Facebook like 20 times. I don't know why, but I think it's so corny, but it kind of makes me laugh at the same time. Um, what does somebody post in the Vlogarinos group that made me laugh so hard? But okay, somebody, keep, people keep on putting this thing up on Facebook. This is the dumb humor of all of us older people on Facebook. And I kind of, it was so dumb, I thought it was funny. People kept on posting this thing. It looked like an ad from Chick-fil-A. And it said, Happy Father's Day for this June 16th, Sunday, June 16th on Father's Day. It was like, fathers eat for free at Chick-fil-A. And people were posting this all over the place. Because Chick-fil-A's not open on Sunday. <laughs> so stupid. People thought they were being so funny. What was this Vlogarinos group thing that somebody posted? Did I read it on here? It was about the something like... I was looking for the fog, but I must have missed it or something. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I am like, th those are the kind of dumb jokes that I liked. It was like, I was look. it was a picture of somebody. They were like going through the fog and it said, I was going through the fog or looking for the fog or something, but I must have missed it. And missed was M not M-I-S-S-E-D. It was M-I-S-T. <laughs> like, messed up. <laughs> I love that kind of crap. I don't know why. Like, it's dumb jokes like that that make me laugh so hard. I love it. I feel like I'm kind of done with this coffee. I haven't really drank this much of this Diet Dr. Pepper yet, but it's good. So, yeah. So, should we have a little bit of this right on top of the Diet Dr. Pepper? No, it's okay. I'll warm it up later. I always save them and warm them up later on Sundays. Um... Oh, that smells so good. I wonder what he's cooking out. I can hardly see it over there. I can see the smoke coming out of the top of it. Um, look at my hair, how long it is. You see it, like, coming out? I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow. Oh, my God, look how white my hair looks. It almost looks blue. That is so crazy. I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow. Should I let, leave it longer, or should I have her cut it real short? I'm thinking about having her fade it up all through here. So, tomorrow, I'm getting my hair cut. I've got a hair appointment tomorrow. And then I'll come home and film a bunch of videos. And then tomorrow night, we don't have anything. So if he, if I go inside and he's asleep, I'll probably walk. And then I'll come back and take a shower. And then I will, or maybe go to the pool. And then, um, but I want to get my walk in today. I'm trying to keep up with these walks. I feel like if I miss a day or two, like, then that's when it's like, then it's three days and it rains. And I'm like, it's so hard to get back into it. But I'm loving walking again. I'm loving it. 
that's not thunder. There's no, I don't think there's any storms tonight. I don't think they were supposed to have rain for a couple days. So tomorrow I'll film some videos. He doesn't have anything tomorrow night. Tuesday night, um, we have another friend of ours. She actually, I talked to her about doing a video. I feel like this is so crazy that we've had two friends of ours that have had like major um, transplants. Um, so Alex's friend Sarah, you know, was a double lung transplant recipient. She's doing fantastically, doing very, very well. I think she's like two years out from that. And so we had another friend of ours that it's interesting because I actually knew her, my ex knew her and they worked together and then Alex met her and then through work and then she left there and they worked for somewhere else. And so I've known her for like longer than Alex has, but she's one of Alex's dearest friends. And um, uh, she just had a, uh, a transplant and um, liver transplant. And she, it's like, it's, she has really good two days. Then the other two days, she's not doing great. Whatever. Her husband is just such a saint, and he is so good. And she's got a little daughter, and she's just is like. I mean, this, this, this girl. I mean, we went to dinner for her birthday about two months ago, and I finally sat down next to her, and I was like, "Sweetie, I was like, what is going on with all this stuff? Like, I see you like say stuff online and whatever, but like you haven't talked about." It. She's like. I mean, there's no reason to complain about it. She's like, you know, what am I going to do? She's like, I just have to wish and pray for the best. And her attitude about it is amazing, right? Like, you want to talk about somebody. Um, so she has a lot of different issues, but one of them is pulmonary hypertension, which is the same thing that her, Sarah had, because her and Sarah kind of like bonded a little bit over this. Like, But then she's got other stuff as well. And so, I mean, you want to talk about somebody being, and this is not the first thing that she's gone through in her life that's been horrific being handed like all this shit and she just always is somebody that responds to it with such grace and I mean that's she's such a role model to me so Alex is going over to see her on Tuesday night I think she can now see people so he's going to she lives close to where he works so he's going to see her on Tuesday night yeah that's kind of it so I don't know why he moved the thing. It's like so smoky over here compared to there. And then tonight, I don't know what show to start. I was talking to everybody at the pool about Bridgerton. Everybody was like real into the whole Bridgerton thing. Let's see what's on Netflix top 10. Did I bring my reading glasses out? Bridgerton is number one. I've seen it. Perfect Match is number two. Okay, I think this is a reality show. Have you guys seen it? I think it has that Harry, that Harry Giles or whatever his name is. Nick Lachey. That's the only cast member. I don't know that I'm really into that. Your Honor is number three. It's so funny because people ask me, will you cover the Netflix show, Your Honor? It's actually a Showtime show. It was a sh on Showtime first. I watch each season like in real time. I think I caught up on the first season and then when the second season came out, I watch it. It's fantastic. It's one of the best shows ever. It is so good, Your Honor. It's with the guy that was in Breaking Bad. Brian Cran Cranston, is that his name? Brian Cranston. It is so, so, so good. Your Honor, I would highly recommend that. Um, Joe Coy in Brooklyn, I have no desire to watch that. Sweet Tooth, I don't even know anything about the Sweet Tooth. Should, should I watch it? There's three seasons. On an epic adventure across a post-apocalyptic world, a lovable boy who's part human and part deer searches for family and home with a gruff protector. Should I watch it? Would somebody tell me about Sweet Tooth if they think I would like it? Eric watched it. Dancing for the Devil watched it. My next guest. Is this Miley Cyrus? Oh, this is the, the David Letterman. Alex watches these things. I don't watch them. Is it Miley? It's Miley Cyrus. I like David Letterman. My mom was really good friends with his sister. They went to the same high school. Um, so... My mom, I don't know if you haven't heard this story before, but my mom was really good friends with David Letterman's sister in high school. They both went to Broderville High School. And so my mom, like on a Friday night, like sure and her girlfriends would go pick her up. And like they would go inside, you know, and say hi to the family and whatever. And she said, I was like, what was David like? And she was like, he was literally laying on the floor with like two of his guy friends. And they were like watching TV on like a Friday night. She was like, he was a nerd. She was like, he was really friendly. Years later, my mom went to Ball State with a friend, like, I don't know, guy like 10 years before she passed away or 20 years before she passed away. 
and um, she went to like him, he spoke or something about something, I can't remember what, and she had like a book signed of his or something signed of his, and he was like, he like got up and he was like, oh my God, he was like, I haven't seen you since I was in high school and all this kind of stuff, and all these people around there were like, how does he know her and all this kind of stuff, but anyway. Um, King of Collect Collectibles, what is this? The Golden Touch? I don't know that I care about all that. Here's my neighbors. Hey, how are you? Those are my neighbors. Do you remember they used to walk last summer? I don't think they live in this neighborhood. I think they live outside the neighborhood. Um, and when I say that, it's because people that live in this neighborhood are a little bit older. So they're a younger couple. I'd say they're probably like mid-30s. And remember they like would like push a baby and they'd have like wine and stuff like that and they just had the baby well she's pregnant again and they're like like walking down she doesn't drink she's not drinking wine right now she had a, like a bottle of water but he was drinking like a, a beer or something like that or truly they're so friendly and um yeah they're really really friendly i've actually passed them when i'm walking like i'll be out walking they're like say it's so funny every time when i'm out walking i see somebody that sees me up here on the front porch they'll be like i've never seen you off your front porch before <laughs> Oh, remembering Gene Wilder. I love him, but I don't know if I care enough to watch a documentary. New on Netflix. Tell them you love me. What is this? Came out in 2023. Oh. Cold Case. What is this? Nightmares and Daydreams? Does anybody know what this is? In a suspenseful horror thriller series, ordinary people encounter supernatural phenomenon. Is it any good? I'll watch the trailer on it and see. What is Welcome to Marwen? Caught in a land of miniature dolls and war? No, absolutely not. <laughs> That's how quick I'm like, decide if I'm gonna watch a show or not. A hundred days to Indy. Auto racing's most electrifying personalities experience triumphs and tri tribulations in their high octane journeys to Indianapolis 500. Who'd care? Not me. <laughs> I live here. Great. Okay. Sweet Tooth hit me in under Paris. Man in Full. That's on my list. Tires. That's on my list. The Judge, leaving soon. When did that come out? I don't even remember that. No, it's too old. I don't want to watch it. Unfrosted. That's on my list. I actually heard that was good. A heated ba a battle over breakfast ignites in 1960s in Michigan in this Pop-Tart comedy starring Jerry Seinfeld, Melissa McCarthy, Jim Gaff Gaffigan, and Amy Schumer. I actually heard that was pretty good. Oh, I know what I want to watch. Here it is, right here. Um, How to Rob a Bank. I want to watch that tonight. I still have to catch up on oh, none of my shows this week have I watched. Where's my weekly list? I haven't watched Ross Wives of Dubai. I haven't watched, I was ta talking to the pool about it. Nice people watch reality shows. And except for my neighbor next door, she watches all the Housewives. And her friend was like, there's a real Housewives of Dubai. I was like, yeah, and it's fantastic. Chanel Ayan, I love. And, Ka and Caroline Stansberry, I didn't love when she was on Ladies with London, but I love her on Dubai. So, I mean, because she just does not give an F at all and has so much money, you know? <laughs> and she's just like the house that she... And her husband, who's younger than her and is gorgeous, he is... He dotes on her like nobody's business. I mean, he opens every car door for her. I mean, he is so... Like, I mean, he is such a gentleman to her. Anyway, I like her. And I like, there's a lot of them on that show that I like. Um, if you watch Dubai, though, Chanel Ayan, her cousin is... I can't think of her name. She's on Real Housewives of New York, the new cast. They're both models. They're gorgeous. Uh, Below Deck, Mediterranean. I haven't watched this week's episode. I'll probably watch that tonight, too. So we'll watch Dubai, and we'll watch RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars, and Untucked tonight. And then I'll probably watch Below Deck, Mediterranean, and The Goat. Let me see how many episodes of The Goat are out. I probably have like four episodes to catch up on. It's okay. It's not that great. Like, I don't know that I would recommend it to anybody, honestly. The Goat.
Did I go into the wrong thing? What, where am I at? Oh, I went to Peacock. Okay, it's on Amazon Prime. I'm like, why is it not showing up? Did they take it off already? If they took it off already, I'll be so pissed. <laughs> Here it is. Are we done? Is, it, is the show over yet? The Goat, season one. How many episodes? View details. Okay, I have season six, season seven. Oh, three episodes? Is it over? Bonus, the official trailer. <clears throat> how many episodes... This is how I spend my days. Is the goat... On Amazon. I read this book years ago. It's a true story. It's called Something to Do with the Goat. And it was about hazing at a university. I feel like it was Clemson. Somebody recommended it to me. I remember doing that. Ten episodes. Through June 27th. Maybe I'll just wait till it's all done and then watch it. What is Pretty Little Liars? I think the last episode comes out. I think the last one comes out this Thursday, so then I'll start watching it. <sighs> I've got so many shows to watch. I keep on thinking maybe I'll start Ozark next, because so many people have recommended Ozark to me, so I'm like, well, maybe I'll start watching Ozark next. But then I don't know. Let's go to my list of shows. But you know what? Like, I'm having so much... Well, right now, I'm on season three of Survivor. If I get, like, a couple more... I think I'm only on, like, episode two. If I get, like, five episodes in, so if I binge-watch a little bit of that time, maybe I'll do some reality TV tonight. If I do a little bit of that and maybe go back and watch Below Deck... Oh, you know what? I've got Below Deck Mediterranean still to finish. I've got, like, half of season five, season six, and season seven. I'm going to finish those and then go back and watch... So maybe that's what I'll do. What did I just do? So maybe I'll go back in and I'll watch those tonight. <clears throat> Because that would be fun. So I'll go back and I'll watch this week's episode of Below Deck Mediterranean. So I keep up with it. Then I'll go back and I'll watch... I think I'm going to save the goat. We'll see. We'll see how I feel tonight. I might save it until it's all done. Um, but then I'm going to go and watch Below Deck, finish season five where I'm at, finish that, and then go in and watch season six and season seven. That'd be fun, don't you think? I trimmed my thumbnails, but not my other nails. And I was like, do I need it? And I looked at them before I went to the pool, and I was like, no. And then I came back to them from the pool, and I'm like, yeah, I think I need to trim them, so I'll do that tonight, too. It's going to be really, really relaxed. I have a feeling I'm going to go inside, and my husband's going to be, like, out for the night. So if that's the case, we may be watching RuPaul's Drag Race tomorrow. Um, I was like, when I started this, I was kind of like... I was kind of sleepy, but now I'm, like, alert. So, if he's asleep when I go inside, then I will uh, probably put my walking shoes on and go take my walk. I also feel like I walked so much yesterday that maybe I should take a day off tonight. It's also really, really hot. What did I say it was? Did I say it was, like, 93 earlier? I could just go back to the pool. Yeah, it's 93 right now and sunny. I might want to wait a little bit. I told him, I said, we can watch our shows if you're not asleep, and then I can take my walk afterwards. I actually like walking in between, like, like 8 and 11. Like, it's cool outside. There's a breeze tonight, so it'll be, like, a perfect night for a walk. Um, but I want to finish the Thursday Murder Club because I have so many books. You guys, I have to be honest with you. I have, like, four. Sorry, no, the True Crime Book Club for this month or for next month. But I have, like, four books for Peter's Book Club. Oh, by the way, somebody sent me a DM of this book called Unask, Unmask Alice by Rick Emerson. Here, I will read you the details of it. Somebody sent me the DM of it. I bought it last night. So Audible's been having this huge sale. It's like, if I'm a premium member, so I get two credits a month. So most of the books for me are like 80% off. I've bought, I mean, I literally spent like $200 on Audible. 
So this is the book. Somebody sent me this and I was like, okay, I'm gonna read this. It's nine hours and 50 minutes. Unmask Alice, LSD, Satanic Panic, and the Imposter Behind the World's Most Notorious Diaries. Two teens, two diaries, two social panics, one incredible fraud. In 1971, Go Ask Alice reinvented the young adult genre with a blistering portrayal of sex psychosis and teenage self-destruction. The supposed diary of a middle-class addict, Go Ask Alex terrified adults and cemented LSD's fearsome reputation, fueling support for the war on drugs. Five million copies later, Go Ask Alice remains a divisive bestseller, outraging censors and earning new fans, all of them drawn by the book's mythic premise, A Real Diary by Anonymous. But Alice was only the beginning. In 1979, another diary rattled the culture, setting the stage for a national meltdown. The po a posthumous memoir of an alleged teenage Satanist, Jay's journal merged with a frightening new crisis, adolescent um, taking their own lives, to create a literal witch hunt, shattering countless lives and poisoning whole communities. In reality, Go Ask Alice and Jay's journal came home came from the same dark place, a serial con artist who betrayed, uh, Beatrice Sparks is her name, and who betrayed a grieving family, stole a dead boy's memory, and lied her way to the National Book Awards. Unmask Alice, LSD, Satanic Panic, and the Imposter Behind the World's Most Notorious Diary is a true story of contagious deception. It stretches from Hollywood to Quantico and passes through a tiny patch of Utah nicknamed the Fraud Capital of America. It's a story of a doomed romance and a vengeful celebrity, of a lazy press and a public mob of two uh, teenagers wanting to take their own lives and their exploitation by a literary vampire. Unmask Alice where the truth is stranger than nonfiction. It just came out on April 12th of 2022. Oh my god, you can buy Go Ask Alice on Audible for five minutes, five hours and seven minutes, five hours and seven minutes, Go Ask Alice. But I'm reading that right now. So I got that one. That's by Rick Emerson. That's not gonna be part of the book club. I bought The Last Girls by Lee Smith and After Annie by Anna Quinlan because they were both in, um, what do you call it? The documentary Hey Boo last night and I really liked what they had to say so I was like, I wanna read these books. And then I have a scary book slash mystery that I think would be a fun summer read. It's either between that and a cozy mystery for Peter's Book Club. Why did I feel like there was one more that I had that I was trying to decide between? Yeah, it's that. I have two cozy, it's between it's two cozy mysteries and a thriller, but more of like a horror thriller. Who would be in the mood to read like a really scary horror thriller for the summer? Let me know in the comment section below. It's between two cozy mysteries. They're both the starts of a series, but like, well, one of them is the one that my neighbor across the street recommended. <laughs> so the other one is, um, I don't really know anything about it, but it's like the first book that's gonna end up being a series. I have so many books I wanna listen to on here. Anyway, good thing I'm in my, my audio, back into my audio listening, so. Okay, on the Thursday Murder Club, I have, I'll tell you how long I have left. I have four hours and 41 minutes left of it. So I should be able to finish that in the next two days if I keep on listening to it at the pace I'm listening to it at right now. But all right, I'm gonna get off here now and I'm gonna go inside. I'm like starting to feel a little crispy. Maybe I did get a little bit of sun today. I don't know. I don't look really that tan um, or that dark. Anyway, I'm going to get off here now and I'm going to go inside and see what Alex is up to and if we're going to watch shows or if I'm going to rest or what I'm going to do. So anyway, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing, what is today? Oh, Sunday. And that you're getting refreshed, renewed, rejuvenated, and relaxed for the week ahead. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Love you.